Kia ora everybody. Good afternoon. My name is Thomas and I'm a musician. And uh, I'm a musician because ever since I can remember, I I've been completely and utterly enamored by the beauty and the power of music. And m my earliest musical memory is, is standing in the lounge room at uh, 102 Tomato Road, Havelock North, Hawke's Bay, where I grew up. Uh, and Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young's This Old House was playing on the stereo. And, and I remember as a three-year-old kid just staring at the stereo and being completely and utterly amazed by the, the beauty of the message in the song and the power of the four-part harmonies. And music was a big part of my, my childhood. My, my father was uh, a singer-songwriter, guitar player, and he used to play music to my brothers and me before bed. And, and this is something that I'm still very grateful for because it really helped to instill a love of music in me from a very young age. And when I got to the age of 10, I said, hey, Dad, I want to do that too. And he said, cool, let's go get your guitar. And so he did. <laughs> and, uh, and I proceeded to devote my entire existence to it. You know, I started writing songs and, and playing in bands and looking like that and stuff. And, uh, <laughs> and it was all I thought about. Well, there was that and skateboarding, I have to say, and, and not much has changed. <laughs> but anyway, let me, let me uh, fast forward seven years to, uh, I was 17 years old and I was staying out at Waimarama Beach with a uh, group of friends and uh, we're, we're staying in a friend's batch and we'd been drinking the night before and uh, we were cleaning up the place the next morning and I was sweeping the floor and, you know, a friend was cooking breakfast and so on. And a friend of mine put on this album and I was sweeping the floor and the first song went by and the second song went by and the third song went by and I kind of thought, oh, this music's kind of cool. And the fourth song went by and I thought, wow, there, there is definitely something about this music. And come the fifth song, I just stopped. And I just stared at the stereo. I was like, what is this? And my friend said, this is Ben Harper. And, and the thing that particularly struck me about it was the sound. Of, you know, I was like, what is that sound? It, it sounds like an acoustic guitar, but it's not. It's, it's, it's different. It's deeper and richer and more resonant. And I just had to know. And I, I went home to research, and I discovered that he was playing something called a Weizenborn. Now, a Weizenborn is a, it's kind of like an acoustic guitar but it's, it's hollow all the way up the neck and it's played across the lap and it doesn't have any frets. The frets you see up the fretboard are um, they're just flush markers because the strings sit about a centimetre off the fretboard and you, you play it by uh, sliding a steel bar across the strings and, and that, that's what gives it its particular characteristic. And it's it, it, in the way that a, like a guitar or a piano is segregated into semitones, the, the Weizenborn is infinite as such, so that the pitching, uh, that there are no barriers, and, and that for me that's comparable to the human voice, and I, I believe that that's why it really spoke to me and, and why it speaks to other people. Now, most people don't know anything about Weizenborns or what they are, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about them. They, they were first made in the 1920s and 30s by a German living in Los Angeles by the name of Hermann Weizenborn, and uh, he was like the absolute boss dog, and he, even after death, he, he's like, <laughs> he's still the genius, you know, and... and um, He's, he's highly regarded, and uh, Weizenborn was actually a brand. It was a brand name, and it was his brand, and um, it became appropriated to be the name of the instrument in the same way that we call a vacuum cleaner, a hoover, or shoe cleaner, nugget, or whatever. And Weizenborns were, they were traditionally Hawaiian instruments, so they were used for Hawaiian music, and then they became appropriated to, uh, for bluegrass and blues and country music, and it was Ben Harper who came along in the mid-90s and he, he brought it back to popular culture. He recontextualized the Weizenborn and he sort of brought it to the forefront of like a rock setting and it really changed things. Anyway, let me go back a bit because come this time as a 17-year-old kid, I'm, I'm fizzing to get my own Weizenborn and uh, so my dad being the acoustic guitar nut that he is, he does some research and he calls me up because I live in Wellington by the stage and he says, there's this guy up the coast you should go and meet. His name is Tony Francis. So I, I call this guy Tony Francis, and, and, he says, uh, and he says, yeah, come around, come meet me. And So I drove up to Waikanae to meet him, and, and for some reason I was expecting like this old, wise old man with a long white beard, and, <laughs> and this kid greets me, and like, you know, like a 17-year-old kid, the same age as me at the time, and, and um, he says, yeah, come in, and we talk about Weizenborn for hours, and he proceeds to absolutely just unload this onslaught of the most fascinating understanding of Weizenborns and everything. You know, here, here's like an instrument that nobody I knew knew anything about, including myself. And then there's this kid who just knows everything there is to know. And 
Tony is the best in the world at making these, and he lives just up the coast, and he's a dear friend of mine. Um, so anyway, I, I finally got my first Tony Francis Weisenborn, and I wrote uh, my very first piece of instrumental music called The Moment, and I recorded it and filmed it and put it on YouTube, and instantly it started to get thousands and thousands of views from all around the world, from uh, and, and you know, and lots of comments from people really taken by this music, and it really just got me thinking about the power of the voice of the Weisenborn on its own, because it had always been like a, a lead instrument or an accompanying instrument, and it kind of got me thinking about what, what it can do when it's on its own and what you can create with it. And uh, so I, I delved as far in as I could to that, and uh, I created an album called Beneath the Weisenborn, which I uh, released a few months ago. And this is the, the first album ever made uh, that's, that uses only Weisenborns, so there are no other instruments, and I really dived as deep as I could and explored the instrument sonically and musically to try and get new sounds out of it. Um, Tony and I were fortunate enough to meet Ben Harper last year when he uh, toured New Zealand because Tony made a Weizenborn specifically for him and he assigned me the mission of getting it to Ben Harper. Um, and that's a mission that I was successful in eventually, but I must say it's very difficult to gift a $4,000 guitar to a superstar. But we, we got there in the end and Ben Harper, like, his mind was blown. He couldn't believe how good this guitar was, and he's gone on to, uh, to order two more of Tony's, and he emails and calls him, like, every second day. So, th so this is, like, very special for both me and Tony because it was Ben Harper who initially inspired both of us to, to go down this path. So, ladies and gentlemen, may I say thank you very much for listening. I, I hope you can take away a little piece of the Weizenborn today, perhaps something that you didn't know about before. And may I also say I'm terribly sorry for speaking at you for seven minutes at such a rapid pace, but it turns out it's very difficult to describe the absolute love of your life in only seven minutes. So thank you very much for listening.